Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us on the webinar series that we are organizing through during International Coaching Week uh, 2020. It gives me immense pleasure to introduce to you X Monks, an ecosystem that brings to you the world-class experts in their own domain for personal transformation and leadership development. This is where we are bringing a few of the best people that I know personally who are doing some amazing work and bringing and simplifying the things that we think is really tough for us to interpret. And our today's speaker is Brian. Brian is an authority in artificial intelligence. He's the CEO, he's the author, uh, and the university instructor and artificial intelligence leadership strategist helping integrate artificial intelligence solutions. What he's going to talk about is an era of artificial intelligence and coaching. Isn't this amazing? You know, before talking to Brian, I had this understanding that the moment artificial intelligence is going to come here, the coaching is going to go out of the window. Now, in all my interactions with Brian, and we are working towards creating a beautiful program together where we are trying to integrate artificial intelligence and coaching together. For me, it was a new perspective, how we can come together and integrate artificial intelligence and coaching together to serve humanity. For me, artificial intelligence is technology, which is not for me. It is where you need to understand a lot of things, a lot of latest technology to make it work for yourself. However, during all my interactions with Brian, it helped, the conversations helped me understand that how we are already using artificial intelligence consciously or unconsciously. As I mentioned, Brian is an authority in artificial intelligence. He has written four books and he's writing a couple of more books. So whether artificial intelligence for business and consultants, artificial intelligence for coaching, artificial intelligence for your personal life, how artificial intelligence can be used to live a very to live an even beautiful life that you are living. To tell you more about Brian, Brian was recently named as the author in residence by the Artificial Intelligence Geeks Toronto community, where he'll be a keynote speaker and has also been named AI advisor at Halton Regional Innovation Center and Hamilton's Innovation Factory. He's also an AI instructor with McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario. Ladies and gentlemen, as I mentioned, I assure you, I promise you, this is going to be one of the finest sessions that you'll be attending. Now, the best part about this session is it's going to be as simple as possible. As I told you, during one of my interactions with Brian, Brian simplified artificial intelligence in the way that I could actually learn it, I could show it, and I could actually make my niece, my nephew, <coughs> understand it at the at the lowest possible level he's going to simplify the artificial intelligence in a way that you would not even think possible right at the same time what we are going to do is after some time i'll be taking pauses and all the questions that you have you can throw it at the art at the question answer forum and i'll be more than happy to ask these questions from brian ladies and gentlemen without taking much of your time handing over to you brian lenahan to talk about the era of artificial intelligence and coaching and era of artificial intelligence and coaching, Brian, over to you. Thank you so much, my friend, for joining us. Such a pleasure and honor to have you here. Why, thank you, Gaurav. Uh, you have put together a stellar list of speakers over the International Coaching Week, uh, and I'm excited to be part of that. Um, when I think about artificial intelligence and the convergence with coaching, this is a really exciting time. And I think about the people who are on this call and the people in your community, you know, the opportunity to get those two things converged, but keeping the intimacy of being a coach. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about artificial intelligence in very sort of simple terms, but how it can be applied with very specific examples. And then as you think about, you know, you as a coaching individual practice, how can you implement artificial intelligence in your business to make a difference for your coachees? So we're going to talk about that today, but there is no way we're going to be able to cover everything related to this topic. So as Gaurav mentioned, we are going to be working together to provide that in much greater detail in the future. But why don't we get started? I'm just going to share my screen. So uh, the image that I'm showing here is uh, two of the books that I've written uh, just recently in 2019. The first one was really about artificial intelligence foundations for business leaders and consultants. So many business leaders who are out there thinking about artificial intelligence, what could it possibly mean to them for their businesses? 
but all too often, artificial intelligent projects that had great promise seem to fail. And they fail for a lot of the same reasons. Believe it or not, that was because of people. So how can people really understand artificial intelligence, its promise, its risks, and its barriers? So you won't hear me talking about artificial intelligence in the sense that it is you know, outperforming everything. There are risks, there are challenges, but there are great ways that you can use the opportunity and go forward. Then I started thinking about the whole coaching practice. How can you integrate a digital capability, but keep the intimacy of the person to person coach? So that resulted in the second book. Let's get started with what our agenda is for today. We're gonna talk a little bit about what is AI. We are not gonna go into great depths, but as Gorov mentioned, I really wanna tell you a little bit about artificial intelligence in its most basic terms so that you can start thinking about how you can engender that in your own practice. And then I'm gonna give you some reasons why we would wanna use artificial intelligence in our practices. I'll provide some practical examples of AI and coaching, some tools, some solutions that are being used today so that you can actually think about how you might use them. And then I wanna tell you a little bit about five steps to generate that unique coaching offering. Now remember, None of the products, none of the solutions that I'm offering today are um, uh, endorsed by me or my company or by Gorav. They're simply suggestions to get you thinking about how you can use artificial intelligence. Uh, towards the end, we'll talk a little bit about what we want to offer in terms of a digital coach course, uh, a way for you to learn in greater detail what's available to you as a coach and how can you could differentiate your business. So let's talk a little bit about the basics of artificial intelligence. If you think about your own coaching practice, think about how you have inputs from your coachee, you know, whether it's their behaviors, their words, their, uh, the way that they dress, the way that they um, uh, convey themselves to you with their body, body language. That's kind of an input. And then you as a coach take that process and use your experience, use your knowledge, use your training to digest that information. And from that, you develop an output that is um, uh, something that's value add for uh, that coachy. Uh, maybe it's in form of action items or words. Artificial intelligence is really not so different. Artificial intelligence is based on input. How can you get you know, large amounts of data, and you can imagine 90% of the world's data has been created just in the last two years. So vast amounts of data being created, whether that's through sensors or smartphones or, you know, in a business environment. So how can you actually take that input and get insights out of it? So in, uh, the algorithms that are available into machine learning or deep learning allow us to take vast amounts of data and train it. So learn over time how that data can be used to generate insights. Maybe it's, the, it's helping the way that you actually drive your vehicle. Uh, the, my favorite three words in the English language are take me home. My GPS knows the best routes to get me there. So that, that is artificial intelligence in practice. Similarly, if you're using Netflix or some other streaming mechanism, and it knows that these are the type of programs that would best suit you and your interests, it's using artificial intelligence. So taking vast amounts of data, creating, uh, using uh, machine learning or deep learning techniques to digest that information and create some sort of output. So that output may be a path home, it may be a movie, it may be uh, a predictive capability for your business. So we're going to show you some examples throughout this, you know, one hour today. What's really changed in 2020 that you're going to have to think about or you're already thinking about in terms of coaching? Well, we think about the 90% economy, you know, things that are changing so drastically, you know, there are people out there who believe we're only ever going to be able to do 90% of what we are able to do before. So whether that's because of the changes that I'm going to talk about next, or it's because um, there are simply embedded changes that uh, have occurred in the economy around the world. 
we are all working from a remote environment um, that we have new challenges, but again, new opportunities. There are companies, companies that uh, we've heard about in the public. Um, Open Text, for example, has decided that 50% of its workforce will remain home permanently. So this is a whole new environment where you as a coach may not get that intimacy of a face-to-face, in-person opportunity. So how do you change your work uh, efforts? Social distance implications, we're seeing it all the time. What is it doing to retail? You know, if you have a restaurant and you now have only 25% capability or 50% capability, how, because of social distancing of tables, for example, you know, how do you work with those restaurant owners, those people who are looking for new ideas from coaches, um, from, be it just simply because of just social distance? Remote idea generation. If you're not sitting in the same room and you're not feeding off of other people and how they're actually doing their idea generation and brainstorming, can you do it effectively in a remote environment? And remote coaching. So we have done telecoaching, um, we have done uh, web-based coaching, um, but is there a way that we can use artificial intelligence to augment what's happening today from a remote coaching perspective. So let's get started. Digital coaching. As we said off the top, digital coaching is a way of thinking about using tools with your clientele to augment your practice. It is not meant for a replacement. I have done years worth of research and found no one that suggests that human coaches will be replaced completely as a result of artificial intelligence. The intimacy, the creativity, the judgment, the innovation that comes from the interaction with people is so important for a coach, a human coach. So let's talk about digital coaching from this side. Just like artificial intelligence, we're talking about taking a specific input, processing it through digital tools and getting an output. If you ask me what kind of tools I use, I'm gonna present one in a little bit, but I also use things like Samsung Health, where you know I'm using artificial intelligence that grabs vast amounts of data, personalizes it in through the analysis, or takes the analysis and personalizes it out to me in terms of uh, my performance levels versus my goals and provides some motivation for me to do that. So I'm using a tool that I can work with personal coaches or personal trainers. The definition here on the screen is one that I partially agree with. A virtual digital experience in a software-based environment, not a real person that interacts through a chat-like interface, asking the employee coaching questions related to specific behaviors. If anyone here has used simply that kind of mechanism, it does help us progress, but not the full way. In reality, the optimal coaching experience is a hybrid of human and digital tools. So what can we do in terms of using digital coaching? Here are just five ways that I've identified. So if you're thinking about your coaching practice and what you do to help your coachee, you provide motivation. You provide discipline opportunities. How do you action plan with your coachees to make things happen? What do you do in the interim between those meetings? Here's where digital tools can be really effective. Skills development. So if you think about like whether you're a sports coach or other type of individual, how do you use AI to provide real analysis of people's activities, behavior change. So how do you work with your coachees to develop a new behavior? And how do you use artificial intelligence to apply to that? Personalization. If all of this is generic, it really doesn't have value. So by being able to take an individual's uh, own data points and uh, create uh, insights and recommendations, that's what you're looking for from your artificial intelligence. 
Gaurav mentioned uh, that we're in the process of writing an additional book. Um, my next book is titled um, Deep Health, Taking Control of Your Health Using Artificial Intelligence. And the idea there is I want something that's personalized to me, not a a uh, specific you know, diet routine that may or may not apply to uh, how my DNA reacts, um, you know, my goals and preferences, uh, my fitness goals. So I want to you know, take all the available data and have that personalized to Brian Linehan and to you for your own opportunities. You may have um, uh, a disease that impacts your um, your food choices. So you need to have something that's personalized to you. And that's very much what coaches do. They take all the information that their, uh, their experience and their training and apply that. So the same thing is required from your digital tools. From a self-awareness perspective, this is really interesting. And I'm going to talk about one example a little later where we are um, now in a position to take data points from our voice, our image, our, face, uh, our faces, um, our tones, and be able to use that information so that when we're thinking about going through an interview, we can be much more aware of what we're projecting out. So we're going to talk about an example like that. So let's talk, start talking about specific examples. And this one's really interesting for me because if you think about your activities as a coach, you think about how can I get my coachee to do more? How can I get them to really take action on the plans that we've developed together on a day-to-day -day basis without me having to send them an email or interject or call? And that's where we're looking at nudging and reinforcing tools for artificial intelligence. And I don't just mean simply a tool that sends you an email each day. There's nothing learning in that. What I'm talking about is tools that actually take information from your goals, your preferences, you know, um, uh, uh, your timelines, and learns from you. So one example I can share with you today is a solution called Rocky AI. And this is a group that I met about a year ago, um, and uh, they've done some very interesting things in terms of combining um, uh, coaching ability with artificial intelligence, so that era of artificial intelligence and coaching. So not only does Rocky AI nudge you about your activities that you said you were gonna be committed to, but it also learns from your responses. Every time you put in a response, it gets to better understand you. And that's the whole idea behind artificial intelligence and the difference between that and traditional computing technology. It learns by getting data, it continues to learn. And then as it's providing you those nudges, it's reinforcing those behaviors and those, those action plans that you want to engage in. But again, it's personalized to you. When I first started uh, learning about Rocky AI, it was a result of my interaction with uh, a gentleman named Jill Rochefort, who um, for 20 years has been collecting data around personalized management coaching assessments. And he has developed such a vast database of information around leaders and managers coaching that he can take that information and apply it into an assessment. Well, that is just a fantastic way for people who are using it around the world um, to uh, enable them to better understand their leaders' capabilities, uh, their leaders' motivations, their leaders' performance. When you combine that assessment capability with something like Rocky AI, where you have that knowledge of yourself and you're doing it on a regular basis and you're getting that reinforcement, it's a very, very powerful combination. Um, for those people who are on the line today, uh, you'll see in the in one of the top right uh, corner that if you use code hashtag Brian for three weeks, uh, you can get free chats. Uh, very instructive for a coach who's thinking about how they interact with their clients and offer them new ways of thinking about the coaching experience. So I'm very excited about this aspect of coaching and artificial intelligence.
I imagine that uh, as you're at home, uh, potentially in the evening if you're in India, uh, maybe you're watching a cricket match or you're anticipating watching a cricket match, um, you know, there is some very exciting new technology in the sports environment. So if you think about, um, there's a company called Gameface AI. And what they've done is they've developed an artificial intelligence coaching capability for cricket. And you can see based on the screen that could be analyzing a right pull shot or a right cover drive or a right leg glance, et cetera. Very, very finite pieces of data that we can use for coaching individuals. And so I think about sports coaching as a, um, a group that has actually made uh, the earliest advances through the coaching and AI convergence. And they've done some wonderful things, whether it's um, American football or it's cricket, um, or um, what we're gonna talk about next, which is boxing. This incredible piece of hardware um, is something that was introduced to me by a friend of mine. Uh, this friend of mine is a PhD. She is a scientist. Uh, she's helping to discover new vaccines, but she's also a boxer. And what's fascinating about her is that she not only uses traditional boxing gyms, you know, if you think about the movies and the dark, dank, you know, gymnasiums for people who are doing boxing, it's not like that at all. In fact, in her situation, she is leveraging artificial intelligence in a way that is enhancing her uh, own performance. So you think about wearables. So things that are monitoring your own um, physiological changes. Um, you think about cameras, where cameras are taking detailed pictures and using them for analysis. And this machine that you're seeing on the screen is something called BotBoxer. And BotBoxer not only is a, um, uh, uh, a punching bag, but it also learns from you and your actions. So it will actually take the data, you can see in the bottom of the right-hand screen where it's collecting this data, and it learns about you as an individual boxer. And then it makes it more and more and more difficult so that you can um, improve your own performance over time. It's a fascinating thing to see sports um, embrace artificial intelligence for performance. There are simple apps like smartphones that you can place on the ground that you know point the camera at yourself as you're playing a sport and it can actually provide insights and recommendations for you as you continually improve. So why not think about how you can apply those uh, artificial intelligence tools to your business. Now I've got a couple of other examples, but um, Gaurav, um, do we know where some of our folks are from and, and what type of coaching they are doing? Could we, could we pose those questions if you haven't already? Absolutely. So there are a lot of people who are who have joined us from different parts of the of, of India. At the same time, I can see several names which are not from India, right? So I'm assuming a couple, few of my friends they have joined from Russia, from uh, Bulgaria. So let's let's pose this question at the audience. If if you can just write down which location are you from and what kind of coaching are you doing primarily in the in the chat box. Okay. So I'm from UK doing primarily business and individual coaching. I'm from Delhi. I'm from Mumbai doing developmental coaching. Delhi, Delhi executive coaching. You've done a great job of uh, publishing, uh, publicizing this in uh, your own country. Yes. Naveen from Bangalore, Inner Transformation Journey. Uh, we've got people from Bulgaria. We've got people from Delhi, again, Performance Coaching Dubai. We've got Skill Development Industry. We've got Delhi Transformation Canada. Um, Armenia doing executive and um, career coaching. I'm in business growth coaching. I'm from Ahmedabad. Uh, I'm from Mumbai doing leadership coaching and organizational development. Mumbai, Mumbai Transition Coaching, Noida doing student coaching. Uh, use all the panelists and attendees. Uh, from Delhi, uh, leadership coach, uh, Gurgaon, executive coach, performance coach, strength coaching, okay. Chandigarh doing consulting, 
um, I'm from Chandigarh again doing coaching, Mumbai mindset coaching, executive and leadership coaching, so Mumbai Vandana executive coaching. So primarily, if I were to look at you know at a, at a broad level, uh, primarily in the space of leadership development, leadership coaching and executive coaching. Yeah, and we have people from Europe. We have got people from France. We have got people from Ontario. We have got people from Bulgaria. We have got people from Paris. So yeah, that's exciting, and uh, I, I'm thrilled that there's such a broad diversity of coaches who realize that they can very much apply that uh, artificial intelligence to their own businesses. Um, one of the people mentioned that they're a student coach, and I love this idea because um, the third book that uh, I wrote um, a number of months ago was about artificial intelligence transitions. And I was concerned that the people in my community didn't have enough insight into the roles of the future that they could apply artificial intelligence, not necessarily as a coder or a programmer, um, but being able to apply the concepts of artificial intelligence into their roles um, or to become a, a data scientist or um, a data analytics professional. And it was exciting to think about that. And as I interviewed some people, um, you know, high school students, university students, people who had recently moved into uh, their own new careers and realizing the importance of something like artificial intelligence and the tools that they could apply to their own business. You know, when I think about uh, some of the executive leadership um, uh, mentors and, and coaches, um, one of the challenges we have on a global basis is lots of countries are really good at uh, training in artificial intelligence and research in artificial intelligence, but we still have major challenges in implementation. And that's going to take people who really understand the environment. And that doesn't necessarily mean uh, AI specialists. It means that we need leaders who understand the potential of artificial intelligence. Um, Gorab, do we have any questions uh, that have been posed as of yet? There are there are a few questions. Let me just go it one by one. Um, and you know, um, Brian, if you remember, that was one of my questions when we spoke a few months back. So same similar question here. It says, as it takes quite a time to build rapport uh, from with your coachee to reach to a point where the coachee finds the space safe to share deep beliefs, values, and share what he or she is going through. Yeah. Now. Coaching take further to build on personalized growth map as well. What are your views from your perspective? How does, how does that come when technology is talking to human being? So, yeah. And uh, let me give you a little bit of example from my own experience. Over the last three years, uh, I've been on quite a, a fitness journey. Um, I had some major health challenges three years ago. Um, really uh, was at a point where I had to take some very, very slow steps in terms of, you know, improving my own uh, personal fitness. And, and really what that started with was, you know, taking a walk around the block, which was all I could accommodate, all I could manage. Um, but over that period of time, I slowly became more comfortable with um, uh, pieces of data that would then motivate me. So whether that was um, a uh, wearable on my um, smartwatch or a fitness scale that gave me new information or people in my uh, own community who had great insights. Um, it was important for me to take very sort of slow steps. And when we think about coaches and how different they are, uh, the, the pace at which they're willing to accept this new technology will be very important for you to understand. So if they are pioneers, much like the people who are on this call, they will readily accept. They might be some of those people who just simply click terms and conditions when a new piece of software is introduced to them. Others are going to be looking at this technology saying, what is this doing in terms of my data? Do I have privacy risks? You know, are there concerns that I should be thinking about before introducing this into the coaching environment? And those are very real and understandable questions. But as you work with your uh, own coachees, it's important to understand the tools, you know, understand their credibility factors. And we're going to talk about that a little bit later. Um, and um, give your, uh, your coachees that sense 
of why the technology is being used, how the information is going to be used, and how they can um, benefit from it. Gora? Thank you so much. Uh, here is another question. It goes like this. Yes. And now, uh, um, Brian, this is a, in fact, if you remember, this was one of the questions that we were discussing when we are working on the program that we are working on. Mm -hmm. And this is specifically to the rural parts of India. And I understand that you have done some work with a few engineers, few financial experts in India, apart from all the other countries that you have worked in. Uh, how can artificial intelligence help in skill development industry, which caters to rural India, rural areas in India? Um, so uh, one of the challenges may be remote expertise in the sense that, you know, getting people who have that expertise out to remote areas. And one of the groups that is doing a phenomenal job on this um, is a company that I'll talk about in a few minutes called Honeywell. So what they're doing is for manufacturing operations activities using virtual reality for training. So in a remote environment, you can replicate what the um, uh, what you might be doing on an on-site basis where it may be risky or dangerous. Um, so if you're remote, you have new training opportunities that don't require travel to a central point or to a point that actually has that physical uh, entity, you know, whether that's steel making or um, tube making or, uh, you know, some other area where, or mining, where you've got um, uh, situations where you need to uh, introduce or onboard people from a, um, a comfortable perspective, you know, uh, taking away the risk, but introducing, you know, training to a virtual or remote community um, using things like artificial intelligence, virtual reality. There are lots of other examples, but that's just one that comes to mind, Gaurav. Thank you. Um, If you'd like to, okay. we can go on and then come back to questions. Yeah, there's one more question that you may want to address. Sure. Uh, it says it can assist in self-awareness, self-regulation and challenge areas without exposing oneself phys physically in front of someone. What are your views on that? Yeah, do you mind if we come to that in a couple of slides? We, um, we have a good example of that. Yeah. Okay, I promise we'll talk about that. So I mentioned um, virtual reality and immersive training. Immersive training is the ability to uh, place an individual inside of a scenario, if you will, with audio, video, uh, sometimes um, um, tensile uh, capabilities, um, where you are uh, replicating the environment and uh, giving the learner or the coachee you know, the opportunity to experience it and do it over and over again. The difference between what you might call a, a simulator, so a, um, uh, a uh, uh, for example, an airline simulator um, where you're uh, following a set of rules, um, uh, advanced immersive training will actually learn from you. It'll learn from other players or other trainers and continue to augment that virtual reality experience or augmented reality where um, many um, uh, doctors are starting to be able to take a look at a uh, physical anatomy and remove parts to look further deeper into that anatomy. Um, so, um, uh, you know, there are so many opportunities that you would no not otherwise have. Um, when I think about um, uh, people who are requiring, uh, who are being onboarded in a sales organization. So how do you take uh, an individual who is raw from the street or maybe is not familiar with your approach and provide them with training other than just simply uh, a word in their ear or an online um, textual uh, training scenario um, and then um, putting them out in front of the customer. So immersive training offers you the opportunity to uh, try that scenario, um, understand how you're using uh, filler words, for example, if you're using um or ah um, in the English language, 
or you're uh, perspiring or you're speaking really quickly or um, you know any of those sorts of uh, kind of scenarios so that yes that may happen the first time around but the artificial intelligence points that out to you and then you can actually uh, try it again and improve your score and improve your ability and then when you have conversations with your manager or with your coach you're doing it in a way that you're getting reflective experiences you know uh, a very good understanding from an objective point of view about how you're performing so you know that was one of your questions you know how do you uh, get that feedback in the next um, uh, slide that I'm going to provide will give an even more detailed way this virtual reality training or coaching can be done in such a way that you can do um, uh, any function, um, you know, any environment can be replicated. Um, there are quite a few companies out uh, in the global market today that weren't there a couple of years ago that can actually create these environments. Um, and some are off the shelf. So very interesting opportunity. If you're thinking about your coach, your coachees, Maybe it's, for example, the executive leaders. How are they doing in front of their board? You know, can they uh, replicate that situation um, so that they are much better prepared for the real board situation and they can really just focus on the core concepts? So very interesting immersive training opportunities that are available today and continue into the future. One of the ones that I'm really interested in, and again, I'm not endorsing any of these solutions, um, but what's interesting is a company called Rotorio. And Rotorio is doing personality assessments. What does that mean? Well, because of advances in artificial intelligence, there's an opportunity to study your face, to study your tone, to study you know, the things that make you you and allow you to understand how you're being perceived by an interviewer. So one of the examples is they identify a role, they identify the criteria for that role, and you'll see in the top left-hand corner, in this one it says overall job fits 79%. So if your coachees are going to, um, uh, looking for a job, and uh, they don't know 100% how they're being perceived, Maybe they have um, tendencies that they're not aware of or they don't, aren't aware how they're being perceived by others. So in this case, a personality assessment done by this Rotorio software will provide you with an understanding of how open you are, you know, how um, uh, spontaneous or reserved or competitive you're perceived to be. You know, maybe you're being ultra cautious or uh, highly emotional or you're actually being considered innovative. So if you think about you know, those people in your domain who are looking for uh, assistance in terms of the next job they're interviewing for, or uh, just even working in their own environment, it's an interesting challenge. But software like this, which is using artificial intelligence and learning with every single person that it assesses to be able to assess you as an individual and use that information to go forward. Um, one of the uh, classes that I was teaching at McMaster University in Hamilton, Ontario, Canada, um, we were talking about um, interviewing for students. And uh, I had asked all of them, there was about 200 students in the room, and I had asked all of them, can, you, um, can anyone tell me that they have been interviewed by a robot? And they looked at me and no one put their hands up. Um, obviously, when I asked the question differently and I said, do you think your resume has been filtered by artificial intelligence? They all put their hand up. But I said, if the same conversation was happening in South Korea, probably 85% of the people in the room would have said, yes, I've been interviewed by a robot. And you can imagine it's a cost effectiveness measure. How do you filter all of those applications, not only at the resume level, but also at the interview level? Now, ultimately the decision is made by a human being, but these are all pieces of information, much like the overall job fit percentage that can be used. 
So not only do students and job candidates in South Korea, you know, look at it from um, having an interview with a robot, they're also taking robot interview courses, preparing for those very same interviews so that they can be, you know, they can understand what the robots are looking for, what the virtual interviewers are expecting to see or would create the best possible fit. So very interesting changing dynamics when it comes to um, uh, the role of personality assessments for both interviewers, recruiters, coaches as well. Um, Gaurav, could we get um, a quick understanding if anybody has used AI in their own businesses through the chat line? Sure. <clears throat> Now, we would love to know in case you've got anyone, in case you've used artificial intelligence in, in any capacity in your business, if you're a practicing coach or a trainer, or even if you are using artificial intelligence in some other way or form. So just type yes, and would love to hear from you. So we've got a couple of people. Uh, Manish, if you can just share with us in what capacity are you using it and uh, what do you do, it would be really fruitful for all of us to delve into that conversation. Thank you. Now, Gaurav, uh, I believe we have about 15 minutes left of our content, and then we have some time for questions. Yes, yes. Okay, so, uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, shall I move on, and then we'll, we'll see what responses we get? Yeah, there are a couple of people who are saying yes as a trainer for sales coaching, yes to re receive sales data and design, beat planning, used uh, personality assessment, leadership development tool. Would love to hear from all these people. And mm -hmm. I'll leave it to you. Yeah, Brian, thank you. Uh, and, and within um, the development of our courses, uh, we're going to be asking those type of people for their feedback. Definitely, you yes. Know, not only the tools, but you know, what do they think are the pros and cons? Yes. Um, so now I'm going to move on to uh, the five steps to generating your coaching offering. And this is just as important as you know, selecting uh, you know, a, a, a coaching relationship and an AI tool to go along with it. So let's start off with the first uh, area, uh, identify your focus areas. So one of the challenges that uh, I see businesses experience all the time is that they look at their sum total of opportunities and say, we could apply AI here, we could apply it there, we could apply it there, we could apply it to finance, operations, manufacturing, um, to our uh, customer service areas, and that may be true. But the challenge is, is that if you start to do all of those things at once, you're not gonna be successful because you're too diverse in terms of your efforts and your time allocated. What's really important for you is if you think about your coaching practice going forward, you know, where are your focus areas? So not only your meta area, which may be executive or career or sports coaching, but, you know, what area, like we've talked about before, is it motivation and discipline? Is it behavior? Is it, you know, skills development? Is it really trying to personalize your message? You know, which one of those sort of focus areas are you trying to develop for your practice? So key if you think about um, any uh, advances that you're going to make to really focus your efforts. Um, one example personally um, was I looked at the, the, the realm of fitness opportunities for me and was excited about it. But as soon as I tried to do more than uh, any given one, um, I would fail. I would have to step back and start on a one specific make advances and then integrate you know new ones as well nothing different from i'm sure your coaching practices which say you know um, be very focused on the areas that you're working on and then continue to make advances so very true in the area of artificial intelligence those companies that have not been successful have tried to do it too broadly and they've uh, uh, spanned their resources, whether it's data scientists or data analytics professionals, um, too, too broadly, uh, as well as their subject matter experts. So again, focus, identify which focus areas you want. The second area is researching existing tools. So I've given you four examples uh, that are used in practice. Um, there are so many existing um, tools out there some of them are identifying themselves as digital. 
some as AI powered. What's most important is that it achieves your end goal. Whenever I talk to executives and we talk about solutions um, for their business problems, you know, quite often they'll ask me, so Brian, where can we apply artificial intelligence? What I ask them to do is back that up and identify the business problems that they want to solve and see whether artificial intelligence is actually a solution. I always get excited that it's artificial intelligence, but I'm always wary that there is a more traditional approach uh, that can be equally cost effective or, or even more cost effective or even produce the kind of results they need or allow them to focus their artificial intelligence priorities elsewhere. So I'll come back to that in a minute. So existing tools, there are um, lots of different ways that you can go about this. Uh, there are software um, uh, review sites like G2 or Captera uh, that will provide you with the pros and cons, ratings, rankings um, around uh, existing tools. Um, uh, what I would say to you is um, other areas, uh, FinTech, for example, have much, made, made much greater progress. Uh, areas of research have made much greater progress in artificial intelligence. But what's exciting is that you're pioneering and these are now being applied in the coaching world. So um, those are ways that you can take a look at existing coaching tools that are applied to artificial intelligence. Um, uh, you can certainly uh, take a look at uh, Digital Coach. Uh, it has uh, quite a few examples of vendors and software solutions, uh, that being my book, um, uh, that uh, will help you down that path, depending upon when you want to go. And it also talks a lot more about the why of artificial intelligence as it relates to coaching. Third is to prioritize, learn, and pilot these tools um, you know, much like being a first time Zoom user, uh, it could be a challenge uh, if you aren't aware of all of the capabilities. So when you have the opportunity, you've identified your focus area, you've, you've researched the tools, you've prioritized which one you want to apply, um, and then you test it out. There are lots that are uh, available free for demo. Um, and if you take the opportunity to apply that sort of demonstration capability, see if it does what you expect it's going to do, um, uh, you're going to be in a much better position, particularly before you put it in front of your coaching portfolio. Um, marketing your uniqueness and capabilities. Truly, artificial intelligence and its convergence with coaching is a new area. There is... Uh, not a lot in the uh, press or the publications uh, about this topic. Um, not to say that there won't be going forward. And I see some really interesting people writing about coaching and artificial intelligence. Um, all, as I mentioned before, all the way through, they're talking about the importance of the hybrid nature of a human and a digital coach. So how can you take those new capabilities like I talked about in terms of personality assessments or um, with um, uh, nudging and, um, and motivation and discipline um, or with immersive training. And how can you take that out to your client base? One of the things that I found when I first started down this path was I started talking about how my solutions were AI powered. People weren't that interested in something that was AI powered. What they were interested in was the results that I could help them get. So as you market your business, if you call something AI powered, it really has to be preceded with what the benefits they are going to get out of that capability. So uh, as I said, there's a broad distribution of people who are looking at uh, your coaching insights, your experience, your understanding. Um, and giving you the credibility to say that this is a tool that will help them, um, but you need to be sure of that, certainly by taking the previous three steps. Um, having said that, this is a compelling new vision. There are new opportunities for coaches who are willing to take that leap into um, digital and AI-powered opportunities to get some real insights for their clients and recommendations. Testimonials. 
one of the things that I see from Gaurav, uh, Aurora, um, and the team in India is people are always talking about him. People are always talking about the great work that he's actually doing in the community with his coaching clients, with ICW, um, and those testimonials are in writing. And so it's very interesting to see the word of the public, uh, word of mouth, um, especially in text, uh, being put out there. And the same is true of your abilities, taking advantage of these tools and getting people who have tried it with you and get their testimonials and publish those testimonials and you know, get people to talk about the results that they have actually achieved using artificial intelligence. And then on to the next tool. So, you know, this is not about having the most artificial intelligence tools. It's about having the right ones for your business. And what's exciting is that more and more are being developed every day. And again, I'm not just talking about apps that are available on Google Play or iTunes or, you know, the uh, Apple Store. I'm talking about your research, the things you've done, steps one through five, making sure that those tools are going to work for you uh, and your coachees. All right, so those are the five steps to generating your unique coaching offering. And I really hope that uh, there are folks that who are uh, on the session today who can take advantage of that and make a difference for their coachees. So, um, Gaurav, I'm gonna move to uh, my conclusion. And then uh, if you're good, we'll open it up to questions. So as I said, AI and digital tools can be useful coaching practice, but they really do require a hybrid approach. Um, you know, some of the things that I read from the International Coach Federation, you know, really um, uh, demonstrate uh, the principles, the guidelines, uh, the training, the, um, the, the global thinking for, uh, that is presented by the International Coach Federation. Um, what's exciting is that they're putting out uh, MCCs, PCCs, coaches who have those levels of certification and are applying those principles globally. What's a great opportunity here is to see that being uh, augmented by digital tools. Data of all kinds can be valuable in optimizing your coaching. What's interesting about artificial intelligence is that it can often create insights that humans could never otherwise see. What in taking large amounts of data, artificial intelligence is great at identifying patterns. And it can use those patterns to um, provide insights and recommendations that we as human beings wouldn't otherwise see. Whether it's being used in cricket or American football or in executive leadership coaching or student coaching, you know, data points that would otherwise not be available, like uh, Rotorio and the personality assessments, you as an individual can see that person, but this tool can only augment what that perception is. So add to your toolkit, you know, go beyond the surveys and the tests and the interviews, you know, use things like image or voice analysis or text analysis, um, predictive capabilities, um, you know, those things that are available through artificial intelligence, increasingly so, um, so that you can augment your own coaching business. Gaurav, should we take some questions? Absolutely, yes. Oh, uh, you know what? I do have a couple more points. Please Very quickly. Um, so you can certainly differentiate your offering, and I recommend that everybody keeps on learning. And if they want to learn more about digital coaching, um, please keep in touch with X Monks Academy and Gaurav's team. Thank you so much, everybody, for your participation. Thank you so much, Brian. Um, so here are a few questions that you may want to play with. Ha! Huh. So first question is, is there any company that you know of which is using text mining for coaching? Um, so this is a good question. And, and I'm going to give you the example. I don't have a specific company, but I'm going to give you how an industry is using it. So um, if you think about the legal industry, um, one of the most time consuming things for lawyers and especially junior associates is the ability to look for precedents. So uh, looking through hundreds of thousands or millions of lines of uh, documents um, can take months and a number of people to do that. So by 
leveraging artificial intelligence and natural language processing in a matter of minutes or hours, that same amount of data can be processed and mined and provided in terms of um, uh, relevance for precedent. Not only can it do that, but it can also look at all of the judges' um, reactions to certain cases and determine with a priority or a probability percentage whether those um, can be used or whether the judge is more likely or less likely to um, rule in your favor. And so law firms increasingly are using that data. So not only to um, coach their junior assistants who are involved in that process, help their existing lawyers, but also move their junior associates into more relevant uh, and higher value add activities. Um, so for the person who's talking about using text mining and coaching, the, the, the link here is how do you use that data mining capability to, to take repetitive tasks and work with the coach to say, and now how do you better leverage your teams? How do you better um, uh, answer and get insights from um, your own data? Thank you. Um, here is another very interesting question, and I have bothered you with this question many times. <laughs> Though you have already touched this, you have already answered this, I think that it would be even better because there are two questions, similar questions on the same lines. What do you think, once artificial intelligence comes into play, would it be a threat to coaches and human existence? Can you say the last part of that question again? And to human existence. Would uh, it be a threat? Just before that. Would it be a threat to coaches and human existence? So I get this question. It's a great question, and it's a very relevant question. Uh, and I get it all the time. Um, when I think about the emergence of artificial intelligence, the, the concept here is, uh, and there are lots of different views, the concept is how do we replace um, you know, non-value add tasks, highly repetitive tasks, dangerous tasks, um, by automating those capabilities. Um, when we think about human interaction, um, most of the uh, articles I read, the people I deal with, the instructions I give are about how do you balance that human capability. It is, we're at the very beginning of the artificial intelligence uh, era. Um, it, when you think about its actual time, even though it's been talked about for the last 60 years, um, only in the last um, five years really have we had um, sufficient amount of data, uh, the uh, cloud capability, uh, you know, processing capability, talent, in order to really move artificial intelligence forward. Um, you know, some uh, forecasters believe that uh, the concept of artificial general intelligence, where we have a similar um, um, capability, uh, artificial intelligence and people is years and years away. Um, if I'm part of your audience, I wouldn't be planning for that. You know, really today, uh, that capability is so much less. Um, you can imagine the, the artificial intelligence that beat, um, that beat the humans on Jeopardy, that won uh, at Go. Um, they had very singular capabilities. You know, they can't walk upstairs. You know, they can't do anything outside of what they're programmed to do and learn. So I'm going to encourage the people on the line who are thinking about artificial intelligence and coaching and its encroachment on the coaching industry is years away and looking for ways for those coaches that can embrace artificial intelligence in ways that will really benefit their clients. Thank you so much. And here's another question. Now, can you share your experiences of tackling biases while using artificial intelligence during coaching? Any real-time experience would be helpful. Yeah, um, so uh, one of the examples I would give is gender bias. So um, as we were looking at um, uh, uh, potential candidates for some more senior level jobs, um, we would look at resumes of those people who had made the transition and made the transition well. And um, this, this has actually uh, been experienced by some other major companies as well. 
So, you know, in, in that scenario, you may or may not be surprised that inevitably what we received in return were 90% male candidates. And that was simply based on the fact that, you know, the today's reality is that 80 to 85% of people who make up the STEM community, the science, technology, engineering, math community are in fact men. And so the challenge of the bias did not take into account the incredible wealth of knowledge and experience that came from the female community. And so fortunately, we have human oversight. As soon as we saw that that was happening, then you know, we were able to take that, uh, revisit that whole sample that was obviously biased. Um, you know, making the artificial intelligence learn that to be successful, a higher probability is male. Um, so for us in um, uh, that kind of environment, um, you know, there are all sorts of different bias. It could be errors. It could be, um, um, you know, um, different types of information that um, was uh, built up in the in the past, uh, one of my former um, roles was working in a bank where there was no vision towards the future in terms of what data was going to be relevant and you know for how long and um, kept in the same format and so on. So all of those challenges certainly exist with AI. So there's a comment that we first we need to understand the human intelligence first to make coaching better understand or better understood. Definitely, yes. Thank you so much. Um, there's one more question. What does virtual and augmented reality fit in your plan and offerings in the context of coaching? Mm -hmm. um, so um, what, um, what I think about, you know, especially as we uh, move towards um, uh, second edition of digital coaching is to more specifically talk about um, the elements of um, virtual and augmented reality um, that a coach can do in a remote workforce environment. So marrying up AI and coaching with the, real, with the current COVID-19 pandemic environment and the realities of it so that it becomes not simply you know, walking into a, a lab to do virtual reality coaching, but to be able to do it in, the, you know, in your own home on the topics that are relevant to you. Um, so, so important for um, solution providers to be able to think about the new dynamics that are more than likely to continue um, and making it comfortable for uh, coaches to be able to leverage that uh, within their own home or whatever, wherever the remote area is. Uh, so certainly from my perspective, you know, looking to incorporate that into uh, new editions of our book and working with um, uh, solutions providers uh, so that they actually understand, you know, what we're seeing as the demands. Thank you, Brian. Brian, there's another question. It says, understanding the human emotions is utmost important in any coaching conversations. What are your views? How is AI going to address that need of an individual? Yep, uh, excellent question. And um, there has been an incredible amount of progress in the ability of artificial intelligence to identify emotions. And um, uh, one of the examples that I use is um, this concept of... Um, um, the Big Bang Theory, which is an American television show quite popular, um, where Sheldon um, really couldn't understand sarcasm. And that was very much a truth in um, uh, artificial intelligence. It could not differentiate between certain types of emotions. But by being able to train artificial intelligence with faces and, and their actual representations, uh, artificial intelligence is becoming much, much better at identifying the difference between, you know, sadness, happiness, um, uh, joy, all the other hate, uh, fear, all the other emotions, and now it's being applied in the media. So how can you use um, 
um, you know, emotional artificial intelligence to determine how clients are actually feeling about you and your product offering and your service without having an individual look at that on a day-to-day -day basis. So being able to apply artificial intelligence to that, um, uh, that media um, and taking out um, um, sort of emotional capabilities or emotional uh, characterizations of what's happening with the company, uh, they're being able to incorporate that quite quickly and change their procedures or their practices as a result. Thank you so much, Brian. In fact, there's a lot of research going on where we are talking, where we are using neurofeedback technique, which helps an individual to understand what's happening in the brain and that's going to get fed up that's going to get fed in the AI uh, data that we'll be collecting. So there's a lot of other tools which are, which, which are there already in the market. And there's a lot of research going on that would help us to understand if the person is motivated or if he is demotivated. And if he's motivated, there's a different way the brain is going to show and feed data into neurofeedback. So, yeah. Fantastic. Absolutely true. Can you also help us understand? Now, this is a little different question from when we're only talking about the coaching part. Artificial intelligence can be used in the culture building of an organization or in the organizational development mm -hmm. or in the marketing traits of an individual, the way people sell their products. What do you think how artificial intelligence can play that vital role in an organization? So it's interesting when you think about um, artificial intelligence from a cultural perspective, it both goes both ways. Um, artificial intelligence can create a culture where people have the expectation that data is going to be available to them, not only available to them, but with context and with insights um, that they can rely on in real time. So culturally, that's going to change an employee's perspective um, about how they are going to do their job in the future. Um, on the flip side, culturally, uh, AI requires champions to be incorporated. There needs to be, um, you know, piloted successes and, you know, people who are um, doing small scale pilot projects that are actually being successful and then moving that on to a larger scale. So you know, there's an expectation from, um, you know, companies that are employing artificial intelligence, but it's also an expectation from their employees who are saying, you know, these investments, you're telling me we're, we're um, maybe reducing staff, maybe we're, um, you know, uh, aligning ourselves to a technology. Um, what is that technology going to deliver and how is it going to make my job even easier? Thank you so much. And so these are all the questions. Thank you so much, Brian. And ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for being such a participative um, audience and for all the wonderful questions that you have to ask. Uh, there are a couple of questions. So we'll be sending you all the information as well that would be handy for you so that you can actually pick up the tools that Brian has been talking about. And as we mentioned, that we are very soon we are coming up with a program where we are going to talk about how can we integrate artificial intelligence and coaching together. And that would be primarily focusing for, the, for our coaching community, right? So thank you so much. Thank you, Brian. Thank you so much on behalf of XMonks. And look forward to speak to you soon. Thank you.